Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. The Sonata for Cello and Piano I wrote for my dear friends, the Gicantes, the Gicanti family, of whom Vittorio is uh, a wonderful cellist, and uh, his brother Duccio is a wonderful violinist. I just wrote a violin sonata for him, for solo violin, and I'm off to the Venice Festival tomorrow to be 80 there, and he's going to... <laughs> And he's going to do the first performance of that in the concert, which I'm very thrilled about. But this piece I wrote for Vittorio, and because that group in Florence does so much of my music, I've often been to Tuscany and done lots of snooping about and picking up information which might be useful. And I did notice that the churches in Tuscany a lot of those country churches built before 1000 were remarkable in that they had no conventional Christian imagery, but they had strange scrolls and snakes and heads with two snakes whispering into the ears of the human head. And I did some research into this, as one does, and found out that, as I suspected, that this had to do with pre-Christian mythology and that in Etruscan legends, and it continued in Rome, in the uh, Roman Empire, that the snake could impart universal knowledge into the ear of a human if that snake took to you and if you behaved yourself. And particularly the religions about the snake teaching people how to sing like birds and understand what the birds are saying, which I think is a wonderful myth. And I was thinking about the contrast, which is one of my preoccupations between the traditional Jewish Christian interpretation of the meaning of snake and uh, a symbol of evil uh, whispered into Eve's ear with disastrous consequences which we still live with, but contrast that with the very constructive idea of the snake first as a great fount of immortal and transcendent knowledge and also as an intermediary between the dead and the living. And I love the coincidence that this piece is on the program uh, together with the Trojan Games, because if you look at your program, that there is the uh, movement number four, Amplexus Placide Tumulum, which is an image I took directly, again, out of the same book, book five, of the Virgil, where uh, at the funeral of Anchises, the snake comes out, acknowledges, and goes back again, and everybody feels very happy about it because this communication has been made in a constructive way between the living and the dead. The investigation, again in this work, in purely musical terms, because it transcends, I hope, anything that I could put into words, is about good and evil. And it's very hard to explain, but I feel particularly towards the end of this work that and I didn't know at the time, but now I can hear how some late Shostakovich was in the back of my mind, particularly that extraordinary, extraordinarily intense and sparse sonata for viola and piano. And in a funny way, although at the time I didn't 
realize it. It's a valedictory piece. And I'm still here, so what was I on about? But it really is with that kind of preoccupation. And I think it really also is the music of somebody who's had a very long life, which when I wrote it, um, I certainly did feel that I had earned the musical right to write sparsely and economically and to absolutely love my audience, my performers, but without any nod to anything else like fashion or what people expect to do in the most uncompromising way exactly what I meant, no matter what that actually did come to. And I think that, again, is one of the joys of getting old, that you have a confidence that you never had when you were younger. For instance, writing Antichrist, I was absolutely scared witless that uh, it wouldn't work. But these days there is a calmness and I think an autumnal feeling, <laughs> if I dare say it, in a lot of the pieces that I'm doing now. And this one, when I heard it performed, uh, in Italy and then here, I thought, yes, that's about as intimate as I can get towards the end of the work, saying things which I could not say in words, but which to me sum up so much and signify things, as I say, which are transcendent.